Building a budget is a lot like building a home. It requires careful and deliberate planning so that all the parts of the home work together to form one cohesive whole. If we leave out a vital part of the home, like the foundation or the roof, the home isn't livable, or it probably won't last very long. We want our budgets to be sustainable over the long term, just like our homes. The six parts of our home correspond to the six vital steps in building a budget. When building a budget, if we're going to get it prioritized the way we need it to be, the first question we should ask is, what are the core functions of government? Deciding what government's core functions are is the equivalent of deciding what vital rooms we need in our home. For example, we know we need at least one bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, and perhaps a storage room or office, depending on your needs. Just as people will disagree about what is needed in a home, so legislators will disagree about government's core functions. We could probably all agree on the need for a few basic rooms, like a kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom. But we shouldn't start building bowling alleys in our home and pretending they're a vital element of the house. The biggest difference between building a home and building a government budget is that when you build your home, you're using your own money. When you build a government budget, you're using taxpayer money. That's why we tend to get budgets that look like mansions instead of a regular home. For core functions of government, we should start with the bare bones, like public safety and justice administration. These are universal core functions that form the bedrock of our budget. They are equivalent to the vital rooms in a home, like the bathroom, kitchen, or bedroom. It would be silly to add an indoor swimming pool to your home while failing to include a bedroom. Likewise, it would be silly to think about state-funded recreational activities when legislators haven't adequately funded public safety priorities. Once we've decided on the vital rooms or the core functions of our home, we can start to build it. The first thing we'll need is a foundation. It will give us the basic dimensions of our home. Likewise, when building a budget, we'll need a nonpartisan revenue forecast that can tell us how much money we have to spend so that we can fit our core functions within the foundation. Next, we'll need an airtight spending limit. This ensures that we won't increase spending, or the size of our house, at an unsustainable rate. The spending limit is the roof of our home. Without it, we might continue to build our house too high. Besides, when it rains, or when we hit an economic downturn, everything inside our home will get soaked. Then we'll really wish we had taken the time to build a good, sturdy roof. A spending limit is an essential part of keeping budget growth capped at a sustainable rate, just as the roof is an essential part of protecting your home from the elements. We'll need to make sure we set aside 3-5% to of our budget in a rainy day account. This is the money you will need for unexpected events and crises. This could be equivalent to having a sprinkler system in your home in case of a fire. You hope you won't have to use it, but you might someday. If you ever need it, you'll sure be glad you installed it. Now we can start adding the vital rooms of our home that we already decided on when we were still in the planning phase. Once we have built the rooms of our home, we can purchase furniture that will make each room livable and to fulfill its purpose. A kitchen is for cooking and storing food, so we need appliances that will facilitate that. We need a stove, an oven, and a refrigerator most importantly. A dishwasher would be nice to have too, but it isn't as vital as the other three. We would not think about buying a flat screen TV to put in the kitchen. That's a luxury and it's not directly related to what a kitchen was designed to do. So too, we shouldn't be purchasing activities that don't directly relate back to fulfilling core functions of government. Finally, once all of the elements of our home are in place, we should hire a home inspector to examine it and make sure it's safe for living. The home inspector should check for mold, electrical problems, plumbing problems, or structural integrity issues and make suggestions for repairs or improvements if needed. Likewise, in budgeting, we need tools like performance audits, performance reviews, and fiscal audits to make sure that the budget does not fall prey to waste, fraud, mismanagement, or other pitfalls. All of the elements of our home work together as a whole. If we're missing any element, the home is in danger of sinking into the ground, getting wet when bad weather arises, burning down if there is a fire, or any other number of problems. Likewise, all the elements of our budget must be in place if it is to be sustainable over any length of time.